can look at it. There we go. I didn't do the afternoon class? Okay. I'll do that tonight. I'll try to get this and the other one uploaded uh, tonight. All right. Okay. What? What? The cardiovascular system is a closed system. You got me? It's a circle. That's why it's called circulation. Say so, yeah. All right. Watch. And as review, what determines the amount of blood pumped by the right side of the heart? Very good. The amount of venous blood that's returned to it. Just tell me you got that. What's that called? It's got a name. No, what's it, the, the amount of venous return uh, to the right side of the heart called? Yeah, I'm going to write it out in white so you can't see it. called preload. Preload on the heart is venous return to the heart. Say yes. You got me? So one more time. What determines the amount of blood pumped by the right side of the heart? The amount of venous blood returned to it. What's that called? Preload. Say yeah. What determines the amount of blood pumped by the left heart? Yeah, what determines the amount of blood pumped by the left heart? The amount of blood pumped by the right heart. What determines the amount of blood pumped by the right heart? The amount of venous blood returned to it. So ipso facto, <coughs> If part one of what I say is true and part two of what I say is true, then part three is what I say is true, right? So what you can say is the amount of blood pumped by the left heart is determined by the amount of venous blood returned to the right side of the heart. So anything that affects venous return of blood to the right side of the heart is going to affect the amount of oxygenated blood sent to the cells of the body. <clears throat> Who's with me? All right. I'm going to write this down. What affects venous return to the right side of the heart? Movement, Movement could affect that, right? Because we learned there's no pressure in the veins. Didn't we learn that, Isabella? Oh, yeah. I'll never forget it. It was a Tuesday. Right? So if you get up and you walk around, you're going to squish the veins, and more venous blood is going to go back to the right side of the heart. Right? The other thing that determines the amount of blood pumped by the right heart is blood volume. Tell me you got that. So did I tell you about the guy that got hit head on? Did I tell you about this? All right, I'm going to tell you about it. When I worked in the emergency room down in Dallas, a guy got hit by a pickup truck or a, a dump truck head on, right? The guy who was driving the dump truck was drunk, hit the guy head on. And he was driving a Ford truck. And the reason I know that is that when he came in, the Ford emblem was embedded in his chest backwards. Like you could see it in his skin, the emblem. 
Are you with me? So the doctor kept yelling at me to put a catheter in him, a urinary catheter. And I'm like, who cares if he pisses on the gurney, right? That's because I was a dumbass and I didn't understand this stuff. So he kept yelling at me to get a catheter in him and then to start big IVs. Are you following? So I started the IVs and he kept yelling at me why, and swearing at me, why don't you have the catheter in? So if, and your job as a nurse is to start big old IVs and give them fluid. His blood pressure was, I don't know, I'm making this up, but it was very low, I know that. 70 over 30. Are you following? Now, I finally got the catheter in, and when you put the catheter in, any urine that's in there, you drain it off, and then you stick the Foley bag on it to measure the urine output. Are you following this? So if you're giving him big IVs of fluid, what should happen to his blood volume? And if your blood volume goes up, what happens to venous return to the right side of the heart? It goes up. And if venous return goes up, what happens to the stretch of the heart? It stretches more. So what happens to the alignment of actin and myosin? It's optimal. So what happens to the force of contraction of the right side of the heart? The amount of blood ejected with each beat and the pressure with which that blood is ejected to the lungs, it goes up. And you just learned that the amount of blood pumped by the right heart is equal to the amount of blood pumped by the left heart. So if you send more blood to the lungs, what's going to happen to the amount of blood in the left side of the heart? It's going to go up. And when you add more blood to the left heart, you stretch it. And when you stretch it, what happens to the force of contraction? The amount of blood that's pumped with each beat and the pressure with which that blood is pumped. It goes up. And when your blood pressure goes up in a resting state, it goes up everywhere, including these little doorknobs called your kidneys. And any time you increase pressure in the kidneys, it forces the kidneys to make more urine. Tell me you got that. Watch. Kelsey's drinking some water, supposedly, in her little fuchsia-colored water bottle. If you drink water in about 15, 20 minutes because you've increased your blood volume, what is she going to have to do? she got to go pee. Say yes. So when I had the catheter in and I'm giving him big fluid, so much fluid that there's a pressure bag on it trying to squeeze that fluid into his cardiovascular system. If his cardiovascular system was intact, what should happen to dude's urine output and his blood pressure? It should go up, and it didn't go up. His blood pressure began to tank, and there was no urine output. And if you introduce fluid into a vein immediately, your blood pressure should go up, and your urine output should go up immediately. So what did the doctor do? Get the OR stat. We need to do an exploratory. And then when they explored him, they found out that his abdominal aorta was ripped, and he was bleeding internally. That's how you assess for internal bleeding. That's why knowing this is important. Do you understand that? I want that whole thing explained to me. What happens to your blood pressure when you're scared? Where? Everywhere, including? That's why when people are scared, they'll pee their pants. You ever been scared where you peed your pants? You're not willing to admit it, are you? I don't blame you. Watch. Right before quiz number one, 
You had to go to the bathroom. Because you were scared. Oh. And when you're scared, you get epinephrine, your blood pressure goes up. That's why you had a pee. How many people followed that? Yes or no? I want that whole thing explained to me. I just explained it to you. Yes. Isn't that nice? If you're, not, if you're mean to me, I'm going to hit pause. <laughs> that's so stupid, huh? Do you think that's important to know? I think so, too. All right, watch. Whoops. How many people have seen the movie um, Unforgiven? You ever see that movie? It's just on TV. I figured you'd be watching it. I was going to email you and ask you if you were watching it. All right, watch. How many people have seen Saving Private Ryan? You seen it? Okay, here we go. Watch. In this scene, just now watch it. Watch it. In this scene, the medic gets shot in the chest and the abdomen. Are you with me? I'm going to turn up the volume. All right. So, hang on. Watch. He shot. Hang on. Okay, just listen. Did you catch that? Did you catch it? Did you catch that? If you're bleeding your own blood, what's going to happen to your blood volume? What's going to happen to venous return? Stretch? Force of contraction? And pressure and the amount of blood ejected by the right side of the heart to the lungs? And we learned that the amount of blood pumped by the right heart is equal to the amount of blood pumped by the left. So there's going to be less blood in the left heart, say yes. Less stretch, less force of contraction. So what's going to happen to the guy's blood pressure? Go down. Where do you store extra venous blood? In your legs. Is there any pressure in the veins? Listen. Listen. 
lift their legs up. So when somebody's bleeding their own blood and you can't stop the bleeding, the first thing you do is you elevate their legs because you store extra venous blood in the legs. And because there's no pressure in the veins, you take advantage of gravity. Say yes. And what, you ever eat liver? You've never eaten liver? Have you ever seen it cooked? It is so red. That's because the liver has a huge blood supply. That's why when he was shot in the liver, he knew it was going to die. So if you get shot in the liver, you're going to die. So don't get shot in the liver, Kelsey. Instead, stay home and read the textbook. Say yeah. Guys, how many people followed that? I want that whole thing explained to me. Do you understand? And you're going, look. <laughs> Watch. Watch. You're going to tell me that when you add more blood back to the right heart, you're going to stretch it, line it up better so the force of contraction is going to be greater. Do you understand that? You're, gonna, you're not going to skip steps. You're going to explain how venous return leads to more blood on the left side of the heart, stretch, greater force of contraction, and increased blood pressure. Tell me you got that. Okay. Boom. I just did number 15. Say yeah. Guys. Alright. Anybody ever been in the military? Do you want to be in the military? You ever stand up at a wedding? Have you ever seen someone pass out at a wedding? They were standing up? Right. If you're Catholic, Catholics always have these really long weddings. I'm Irish Catholic, so they're like nine hours. So I was standing up at my buddy's wedding, and you, I did something that I know I'm not supposed to do, and I locked my knees. Are you with me? Where's all my venous blood? In my legs. If I'm not contracting my muscles, am I getting venous blood back to the right side of the heart? If I get less venous blood back to the right side, what's going to happen to the stretch of the right side of the heart? So what's going to happen to the force of contraction of the right side, the pressure, and the amount of blood ejected with each beat? And you learn that the amount of blood in the right heart is equal to the amount of blood in the left. So if there's less blood in the right heart, right heart, there will be less blood in the left heart. So what will happen to the left side of the heart? What will happen to it? It won't stretch, so what will happen to the force of contraction and the amount of blood ejected with each beat and the pressure with which that blood is ejected? And it will decrease where? All over. And if you don't maintain blood flow to your brain, you pass out. What do they tell you to do if somebody passes out? What would you do? You lift their legs up. Do you see that? Anybody work in a hospital? When somebody passes out, what do they do?
That's why I explain that they, when their blood pressure is low, there's a little button on the foot of the bed. You hit it, and it puts them on their head. Tell me you, you followed that. I gotta teach a night class, so I gotta tone it down. Why do people faint if they've been standing for a prolonged period of time? Watch. If this question is on the quiz and you don't explain every step, I'm taking points off. Do you understand that? I don't think I can be any clearer than that. If you don't tell me what happens to the right side and how that affects the left side, you're getting points off. You're going to understand a process. Say yes. Okay. I said explain two things you could do for the person. What's one thing you could do? You can lift their legs up. What's another thing you could do? Uh, yeah, okay. But let's say that you don't have IV fluids. What's another thing you could do? They have ammonia capsules. And when somebody passes out, you break that and you put it underneath their nose. And when they inhale that, that stimulates the sympathetic nervous system. So what happens to your heart rate and the force of contraction of your heart under sympathetic stimulation? It goes up and their blood pressure goes up and they wake up. That's why they use smelling salts. If you don't have smelling salts, you can grab their hand and have them pull your finger. Did you get that, Andrea? You didn't like that. See, that's a smelling salt replacement. <laughs> Do you know what a Dutch oven is? That's where you're laying in bed with your girlfriend, and then you fart, and then put the covers over her head. I did that to my girlfriend, and she threw up in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> On a beautiful one of those Sealy Costropedic memory foam mattresses that I paid like $1,800 for, and I didn't have a cover on it, so I had to get rid of it. So do you think I ever do that to her again? Yes, I do. I just got a plastic cover this time. <laughs> Tell me you got that, guys. How exactly does the ammonia capsule break it? How does it increase the blood pressure? It stimulates the sympathetic nervous system. And any time you stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, your heart rate and blood pressure go up. Say yeah. Guys, OK. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, I'm going over number seven. Oh. All right, ready? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to explain to you inside the heart, how the electrolytes actually move to produce the electrical activity of the heart. Do you understand this? So what I'm gonna do is we know that the pacemaker of the heart is the sinoatrial node, the SA node, right? We know this. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cell of the SA node and I'm going to blow it up and I'm going to explain to you how the electrolytes move in and out of that cell to produce the electrical activity. Are you with me? Guys? Okay. So this is what I'm going to do first. I'm going to give you, and that's why I asked you on how stuff moves into and out of a cell, why you needed to know this, because now it's going to come back and haunt you. That's a cell. Here's a cell membrane. So this is an SA node cell. What produces the electrical activity of the heart? Electrolytes. The movement of electrolytes into and out of a cell. And if you also recall, and I'll never forget it, and it was definitely a Tuesday, I explained to you that cells of the body that produce electricity not only do they have leak channels, but they also have voltage-gated channels. Do you remember this? And if you recall, voltage-gated channels open and close at a specific voltage inside this cell. So this is where this stuff is going to come back to you. So embedded in the SA node cell and in heart cells in general you have ion leak channels and again these ion leak channels are specific also embedded in heart cells and all cells is a little pump called the sodium potassium pump and the sodium potassium pump oddly enough pumps sodium and potassium in addition to ion leak channels you also have voltage gated channels and these voltage gated channels open and close at a specific voltage inside that cell. Who's with me? And I'm going to label this stuff and then you're going to get this. Alright? This guy right here, this is a sodium leak channel. This guy right here is a potassium leak channel. And this guy right here is a calcium leak channel. Who's with me so far? This guy right here a sodium voltage gated channel. This guy right here, potassium voltage gated channel. And this guy right here is a calcium voltage gated channel. Who's with me? All right. It's 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to explain to you these four things right here. Sodium, potassium, calcium leak channel, and then the sodium potassium pump. All right? So, what you're looking at, this is the cell membrane of the SA node. You got me? So, this is inside the cell, and then, of course, this is the outside of the blood. You got me? All right. Now, if you're resting, what are you doing? Nothing. Okay? So, all heart cells, if they're not firing, are resting. You got me? So, inside all heart cells, when they're resting, there is a specific electrical charge inside those cells. That specific electrical charge, when the cells of the heart are doing nothing, is called the resting membrane, membrane potential. That's the charge inside heart cells, in this case an SA node cell, when that thing is not doing anything. It's not firing, it's just sitting there. Tell me you got that. And that charge is always negative, and I'll explain that in a minute. And I don't care about what the charge number is, who cares? You go to graduate school, you learn about this. You guys are going to be nurses, most of you, and you need to know this. All right? Watch. Where's sodium highly concentrated always? Blood. Where's calcium always highly concentrated? Where's potassium always highly concentrated? Cell. Where do they want to go? Where does sodium want to go? We'll look at the arrow. Into the cell because it wants to go from high to low. Calcium wants to go from high to low, and potassium wants to go from high to low. Tell me you got that. So I think we should try this, right? This one definitely, right? Timmy will be the blood, and then you'll be the inside of the cell. All right? Now, this is the kicker. Potassium is a hundred times more permeable than sodium and calcium. So we should do this. Every class that you come in, you give Timmy a hundred dollars. And when you leave, Timmy gives you two dollars back. What do you think? Well, we should try that. Watch. At the end of the semester, shoot, at the end of the first class, who's going to be negative and who's going to be positive? I always set it up this way. You're going to be negative and Timmy's going to be positive. You got me? Why? Because potassium is a hundred times more permeable. So there's going to be more positive charges on the outside compared to the inside. And any time you have a difference in charge across the cell membrane, 
if those cells contain voltage gated channels it can produce electricity who's following this so far guys yes or no I'm just gonna keep going so watch once it's reaching once it reaches its resting membrane potential, these little leak channels become less leaky and potassium stops leaking out. Are you following me? That's how you get that resting membrane potential. Potassium leaks out until there's a charge, a critical charge inside that cell membrane, and once it's reached, potassium stops leaking out. All right? Now, the, sodium, the job of the sodium potassium pump is to maintain that resting membrane potential and then to reestablish the resting membrane potential after the SA node fires. And if you recall, the, S, the sodium potassium pump takes three sodiums that leaked in and pumps them out, and two potassiums that leaked out and pumps them in. And because you're pumping against the concentration gradient, what does that require? ATP. Say yes, TP. Guys, you're going to get this. You're going to study this. 300 big ones, no little ones. All right. So now you are at the resting membrane potential. What established the resting membrane potential? Sodium and calcium leaking in and potassium leaking out. But potassium is 100 times more permeable, so the outside becomes positive relative to the inside. And what helps maintain it? The sodium potassium pump. All right, here we go. Write this down. The SA node is naturally leaky to sodium and calcium. What charge do sodium and calcium have? They're both positive. What's the charge inside that SA node cell? It's negative. So, watch it. Watch it. When sodium and calcium begin to naturally leak in, the charge inside that cell is going to become more positive, right? Because sodium and calcium are leaking in. And when enough sodium and calcium leak in, it's going to hit this critical voltage called threshold. At threshold, this is where you activate voltage-gated channels. What caused the SA node to begin to move towards threshold? The sodium and calcium naturally leaking in. Who's with me? And when enough sodium and calcium leak in where you hit this critical voltage called threshold, here we go. At threshold, you activate or open voltage-gated sodium channels. 
Where's sodium highly concentrated? It's in the blood. So when you activate sodium voltage gated channels, tons of sodium is going to flood in. Sodium is positive, so it's going to come into that SA node cell and it's going to shoot that voltage up and it's going to become much more positive. When you open up voltage gated sodium channels, the SA node cell fires. And when the SA node cell fires, watch it. That's called depolarization. So the SA node has depolarized. It's fired. Who's with me? Guys? At all? A little bit? Better write this down. What's the most important element in muscular contraction? Where does the heart and blood vessels get its calcium from to contract? The blood, it's very good. So you better write this down. At the same time the voltage gated sodium channels open, the voltage gated calcium channels open. And calcium will flood in to cause the heart muscle to contract. Are you with me? So what did the heart do? It depolarized. What's your hope, your prayer? Your prayer is that you have more than one heartbeat each day. So at this critical voltage right here, it's a different charge, right? It's a different number, right? It's a positive number or more positive. What's going to happen is the voltage gated sodium channels will close so no more sodium floods in the voltage gated calcium channels remain open and the voltage gated potassium channels now open and when you open up voltage gated potassium channels Potassium from inside the cell floods out. So what will happen is this. Watch. The voltage-gated sodium channels are closed. The voltage-gated calcium channels remain open and the voltage gated potassium channels open. So as you can clearly see, you have a positive thing coming in and a positive thing leaving. But here's the kicker. Potassium leaves at a slightly quicker rate than calcium enters. So you will get this slow drop in the charge inside that heart cell. Right? Positive thing coming in, positive thing coming out. But potassium's leaving slightly faster. So that charge inside that SA node cell takes, it slowly drifts downward. Then, then another critical voltage is hit. Lots of critical voltages. Right here. And at that critical voltage, the voltage gated calcium channels close and the voltage gated potassium channel remains open. So right here the voltage gated calcium channels close but the voltage gated potassium channel remains open so potassium begins to flood out. So what happens to the charge inside that heart cell? 
it starts dropping down towards resting again. And because you are bringing the charge inside that heart cell back to resting, when you do that, that's called repolarization. So potassium causes repolarization of heart cells. What causes depolarization? Sodium and to some degree calcium, but it's mostly sodium. What causes repolarization? The movement of potassium out of the cell. Say yaba, guys. Now watch. Watch. The voltage-gated potassium channels remain open long enough for the charge inside that cell to drop even lower than resting. It's called overshoot or hyperpolarization. It's even more negative, hyper polarization. And I'll explain why that's important in a minute. And at this overshoot, the voltage-gated potassium channels close. And then watch. It's the job of our buddy, our pal, the one and only sodium potassium pump to bring it back to resting. Are you with me? Then what happens at resting? Sodium and calcium naturally leak in and once it hits threshold the voltage gated channels open leaky leaky boom leaky 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 boom and that produces your heart rate now I don't expect you to get this you're gonna collect information then go home and study it isn't that right Isabella say yeah can I show you something clinical can I? You ever hear of lidocaine? Have you heard of it? Lidocaine is used to treat rapid heart rate. Are you following this? So watch. Then can let's see. Watch. If your heart rate is beating really fast, that's because the cells are becoming more leaky to sodium. Who's following this? A little bit. This doesn't help.
Okay, watch. Look. And this is why you guys flunk pharmacology. It's because you don't understand this stuff right here. If you get this, life will be good. If you don't, horticulture is calling. All right, watch. Lidocaine blocks sodium channels. What caused the heart to depolarize? The opening of sodium voltage gated channels. If you block sodium voltage gated channels and weak channels, it will take longer for it to depolarize. So your heart rate drops. That's how these drugs work. Do you understand? And guess what? In nursing school, they ask you questions based on the fact that you understand this stuff. And if you don't understand it, then you say, that, f that pot of roses looks very nice. Let me rearrange it, because you're going to horticulture or welding. Tell me you got that. Boom. Watch. A nerve fires almost the same way as the heart does, just some subtle differences. So lidocaine blocks sodium channels. So that's how lidocaine works as an anesthetic as well. Right? Do you want your tooth, do you want to feel your tooth as it's getting yanked out of your skull? No. So they give you Novocaine or Ponticaine. How many, you guys didn't follow that, did you? Isabella? Did you? Huh? Right. You don't learn anything in this class. You collect information and go home and study it. You're collecting information. That's the cardiac action potential. I want that whole thing explained to me. Let's see what I want that whole thing explained to me. I want you to explain how a heart cell develops a resting membrane potential. And then I want you to tell me how the channels open and close to produce the electrical activity of the heart. Say yeah. Here we go. Watch it. Watch it. What two electrolytes contribute to the resting membrane potential rising and getting closer to threshold? Just, well, I'll just tell you. It's sodium and calcium. Are you following me? So, if you gave somebody a drug that blocked calcium channels in the heart, what's the only electrolyte now that's contributing to the rise closer to threshold. Sodium. So if sodium is the only electrolyte because you block calcium channels, will it take longer or shorter for that charge to reach threshold and fire? It will take longer. And because it takes longer, your heart rate will drop. So, do calcium channel blockers affect heart rate? Do so you remember quiz one? When I said sodium, calcium, potassium leak channels, voltage gated channels, and the sodium potassium, remember that? It's rare and it's ugly head. Tell me you got that. What's the most important element in muscular contraction? 
if you block calcium channels in the heart, what will happen to how hard the heart contracts? It will decrease. And if the force of contraction of the heart decreases, what happens to the blood pressure it can create? It decreases. So you better write this down because doctors and nurses like using big terms. Makes them feel good. Chronotropic deals with heart rate. Inotropic deals with force of contraction. So calcium channel blockers are both a negative chronotrope and a negative inotrope. They decrease heart rate and force of contraction. How many people follow this? A little bit? That's okay. You're going to go home and study this really hard. Do you know why? It's on the test, and it's worth 300 points. See? Ready? Did you follow this? A little bit. A little bit? Okay, watch. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. What's the most important element in muscular contraction? What is it? I'm going to put that on the quiz. Right? I'm going to write, what's the most important element in muscular Right? And what are you going to write? Right. That will be worth 50 points. Right? That should make you feel good about it. I know that one. <laughs> Ready? What are arteries made out of? Huh? Very good. What are the two things muscle can do? Get this right, you get extra credit. That's right. Contract and relax. See? Okay. You get uh, zero, zero point zero zero one points of extra. See, you're supposed to ask how much. Then you have to ask yourself, Kelsey, is the juice worth the squeeze, meaning the amount of effort that I'd have to think to get that answer right, is that worth that extra credit? And obviously no. Anyway, it's too late. You already did it. Are you ready? Watch. Why ain't this working? Look, I'm moving my pen and it ain't writing. Oh, wait, I know why. Maybe I don't. Oh. Hang on. this works. That don't work either. Okay, hang on. Okay. Okay. Alright, ready? The goal of the cardiovascular system is to maintain blood flow, maintain Q, right? And we learned that Q is determined by your systolic blood pressure divided by the resistance to arterial blood flow. What determines resistance to arterial blood flow? Mm -hmm. 
What vessels? Arteries. Arteries. Right. So the diameter of the artery. Say yeah. When arterial diameter is small, resistance to blood flow is high, right? And when arterial diameter is big, resistance to blood flow is low. You got me? So if your arteries constrict, resistance goes up, and what has to happen to systolic blood pressure to maintain blood flow? It has to go what? Up. So now you got high blood pressure. Say yes. Guys, what's the most important element in muscular contraction? Calcium. Where do heart and arteries get their calcium from to contract? The blood. So when calcium from the blood goes into a muscular wall of the artery, it will cause that artery to constrict, get smaller. So what happens to resistance to blood flow? So what happens to your blood pressure? Just look at the arrow, it's going up, good. So now you got high blood pressure. So you can treat high blood pressure by giving a drug that blocks calcium channels in the muscle cells of arteries. And if you block them, the artery can't constrict, it will what? Dilate. And if it gets bigger, what happens to resistance to blood flow? And what will happen to your blood pressure to maintain Q? It will go down. Tell me you got that. So calcium channel blockers can be used as antihypertensives and to treat rapid heart rate because we know that calcium is involved in the electrical activity of the heart. Say so, yeah. How many people have chemistry? Can you imagine trying to understand this and never having chemistry before? There's going to be two people graduating from Gateway's nursing program. Because the other ones ain't going to make it. Because they don't have chemistry. Cut it out. Here we go. How many people filed that? Yeah? Here's a dude, his name is, um, I call him Joey Bag of Donuts. He's supposedly a nurse and he makes videos and he explains like calcium channel blockers and stuff. Are you with me? You heard my explanation, okay? You Just indulge me, nine minutes out of your life, you can do that for me, yeah? And this is why you don't know what you don't know. Ready? Let's see if this works. Hang on. Let me just give you a little background information about dude. He charges $40 a month 
to watch his videos. Do you understand? And the reason people pay this is because they got a crappy education. The information I'm giving you is top quality and it's what you're going to need. So you drink the Kool-Aid, it'll be good for you. Don't. You're going to be watching Joey Bag of Donuts and working in horticulture. Okay. As well as Ready? 12 minute right. videos not here on YouTube. All right, guys, let's get our oldies webcam video started right here. Watch this. You're going to get a quiz on it. So calcium channel blockers are usually uh, drugs that end in high. So, let's see here. P-I-N-E. It's actually peen. Amylodipine. Uh, for instance, um, your drugs that end with the word high. Just like beta blockers are the ones that, the medication that end with the uh, LOL, so like um, uh, metoprolol and gridolol, but um, calcium channel blockers in pine. But one of the biggest calcium channel blockers that is used in the hospitals is cardizem. And cardizem is really used with uh, patients with uh, have really high blood pressure, you should put on a cardizem drip. So right now I'm gonna show you guys the mechanisms of how Calcium channel blockers really relieve the pressure off that heart and really help your heart to uh, give it an easy, smooth contraction. So let's get into it here. So let's do some basic anatomy physiology. So here's your heart. There you go. Now your heart, now the heart's main responsibility is to pump blood, correct? It's basically like a pump in your car. Your uh, fuel pump pumps fuel to the rest of the car. The heart is the same thing but with blood. And blood's main responsibility is to pump nutrients as well as oxygen to the rest of the body. Because without oxygen, your body um, usually, I'm sorry, your body doesn't usually die, your body does die. So, we all know that veins vacuum
Did you write that down? Your heart needs to last you for your lifetime. Here it comes. Take a big picture of the epithelial cells of the blood vessels and really blew it up like this. We know that the cells of a blood vessel kind of look like a city. So if we blew it up here, we took a big picture of this peripheral vessel. First of all, they don't release enzymes. Did that make any sense? Wait, it gets better. Watch. Amazing videos.
Thanks for sharing your gift of teaching. Wow, made it really easy to understand. He took this video down because I commented on it. And that's why it's revisited. He put the same video up. He just, they took the old one down because I said, this guy is just absolutely full of crap. And he, if you go to that simplenursing.com, he charges nursing students $40 a month to watch that garbage. And people are subscribing to that. Do you know why they are? You don't know what you don't know. So you think because this guy's got a scrub top on, he's got it going on. He doesn't know anything. Here, wait, maybe it's this. So, calcium channel blockers. Yeah, calcium he did it. channel blockers. Oh, wait, here. Yeah. What the heck do they do? <laughs> calcium channel blockers do exactly what they sound like. They block calcium channels. Okay. Where is it? Yeah, he... Uh, That's what I wanted to add. Yeah. Calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers block calcium channels. Okay, so for cardiac Did you get that? glycosides, your ditch... Okay, uh, wait. One of the biggest questions on like nursing tests is your patient sees Where is it? halos. Wait. Or like green halos. Uh, that's a huge ditch toxicity question. Oh, is, is this the one I commented on? Ah, oh, there it is. Yep. <laughs> I didn't see that. So, uh, watch. He took down a bunch. He, can you take down comments? Yeah, because that's what he did. And then just just wait, wait. Hang on, is this it? Okay, yeah, here beta we go. Oh, he took them down. Blockers of your heart for your hypertensive patients. Yeah. So, just like we just talked about in terms of volume depleters. So what he did is I made these comments and and he took them. He, he redid it, the videos and and. Uh, and took my comments down because I told them, I said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself that you're actually charging money for this stuff. And I said, you're taking advantage of a nursing student who, to a nursing student, $40 is the same as 40000 Either one they don't have. And you, you get money for this. So you know what his job is? He goes to all the colleges and says, this is wonderful stuff. You need to have your nursing students subscribe and this nursing school should pay for the subscription and it's absolute garbage and there are nursing instructors who recommend watching his videos you don't know what you don't know so again you're going to see a dude with scrubs on and you think oh yeah that makes sense that makes sense so I say it unto you Right, I'd mark their whole life wrong if they wrote that. So, like, what, what is he doing? Because he's an idiot. But here's the thing. Am I, am I coveting all day long? There's no two ways about it. Because he thought of it before I did. But the fact of the matter is, is that the reason I never put out any videos on YouTube is because I thought, well, you know, I kind of take some shortcuts and then people are going to rip it to smithereens. The fact of the matter is, if I would have known this, I would have put them on a long time ago because this stuff, you know that arteries are made of muscle and what's the most important element in muscular contraction? So if you prevent calcium from getting into the muscular wall, it won't contract, it will dilate. And resistance is lower and therefore blood pressure is lower. That's all he would have to say. Instead, he, it makes them hard. So I, I comment, I go, how does a calcium channel bl blocker make your heart hard? Right? How does calcium make your heart hard? He's an idiot. Because watch, 
And I'm telling you, this is a fact. The stuff that I'm giving you is quality information. And it's exactly what you need. And it bothers me that you guys need to be serious about this stuff and learn it. And the difference between people who are successful over there and people who aren't are the people who understand this stuff. Boom. I can ch I've saved them. I didn't, but now I do. All the emails of the students who are in clinical, and you know what they'll do? And I don't say anything. Tim, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because I know what's going on and those other students don't. So all I'm asking you is to pay the freaking price now. Otherwise, you won't pay for it over there. And it don't matter to me. You know why? I'm going to get paid for this class, and I got mine. You got to get yours. All I'm trying to do is help you. And think about it for a minute. And you know I'm right. How many classes have you taken where you don't put any work in and you do great, right? How much did you remember from that stuff? The fact of the matter is they're going to expect you to know it. And you know what? They ain't going to explain it to you because you know what their argument is? you got chemistry, general anatomy, advanced anatomy, microbiology. You should know something. That's all I'm saying. So you can... Follow my little 15 week program. If not, it doesn't matter. Because in the fall, I'm going to have a group, another group of students, and I'm going to do the same thing. Right? And if they want to, they do. If they don't, I don't care. Because so I got mine. You got to get yours. Wait, can I show you something? Watch. Just watch. I'm going to give you a break then. Watch. We're talking about actual. Uh, Just listen the conduction system of your heart. So there's a few different ways to lower blood pressure. We can take the workload off. Watch well, there's two different ways we can say. It. We can take Wait, the now there's three. No, there's four. Of the pipes themselves in terms of your diuretics and your ACE inhibitors, just decrease the fluid volume. There's about four different ways. We just did there's the last two, now year. there's four. Then there's a way to decrease the rate of conduction in the heart. So this is one of the ways are beta blockers. Okay. So we have the beta blockers, Watch, listen to the it. calcium channel blockers that block the calcium channels. Um, we also have um, a few other different things that we can do. Let me see, A, B, C and D. And then E, yeah. F, so G. So beta blockers is a negative, what's called chronotropic drug. We block that SA node from contracting to The it. SA node contracts. So what do beta blockers do? Wait, here it comes. Listen. Beta blockers block the beta adrenergic receptor. Fancy, fancy terms for... Um, beta 1 and beta 2. Beta 1 are these little receptors in the heart that tell the heart to contract very fast. So if we stimulate these beta receptors, we're going to contract really, really quick. Um, same thing in the lungs. Beta 2, Hang on. you have two lungs. Yeah, he took beta mine one, down. You have one heart. So if you oh wait, am I signed in? Oh, I'm not signed two. in. That's why. Wait, hang on. That's why. Watch. What the hell? Hang on. I'll give you a break then. Just indulge me. I work hard for you guys most days. Okay, here. Does this sound like me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, beta black. Wait, I think there's more. Yeah. What is it? Hey. 
There's another one. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Am I? No. How do you do that? Oh, did I really? They're good comments. We also have a few other different things that we can do. We see A, B, C, and D. What? Watch. Watch. So, what do beta blockers wait here? Do beta blockers block the beta adrenergic receptor? Right. He has As no idea what he's talking for. about. So, what he does is that he uses big words. So people, oh, he knows beta adrenergic. He must know what he's talking about. Hang on. Wait. Wait. Mass of signs and symptoms of bradycardia. What does that mean? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Hang on, where is it? Oh. See, you just got schooled by Timmy. There's another one. You know what he never says? Just so you know, in this whole video, um, he never once says that epinephrine binds to beta receptors. Beta one are these little receptors never says that. In the heart How do you explain to someone a beta blocker without explaining that effects. epinephrine binds to so a beta receptor? So we receptors. stimulate these beta receptors. We're gonna contract really, really quick. Um, same thing in the lungs. Beta two, you have. He's an idiot. But again, you don't know what you don't know. So you're gonna look at this, and the guy is got scrap. Oh, yeah, that's so good. Say yeah. All right, come on, give me your multiple guess. Take a break. You can take a break. Man, oh, man, I hope this works. Thank you. You guys need to be on top of this stuff, yes? Kelsey? Mm -hmm. Yes? You want to get through this class, don't you? Mm -hmm. So I want to rely on that YouTuber. <laughs> you know, I would never rely on him. Do you know about this dude? Mm -hmm. I've never heard of him. He says a lot. Like a lot. He has no idea what he's talking about. That's sad. To charge people 40 bucks a month? It just seems like he just learned all that stuff like five minutes before he even made the video. I think that's awful. Mm -hmm. I'm pissed though that I didn't get on the bandwagon first. To make me some money. Yeah, what are you going to do? Right? What are you going to call?
Can you imagine taking this class online? Would you want to take this class online? I don't think so. Kelsey, do you want to take this class online? I have to limit the number of emails. That's all students we need. Ah, ah. Okay, yeah. Hello? 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 Hello, hello? Don't work in. Hello? Hello? What am I doing? Making sure that mic works. Hello? 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 Hello